This is the first time we have got a good open LLM to do function calling. This has been one of the biggest moat for OpenAI and now we have got an open source model that can do function calling for any language model and any API that you want. And in this video, we're going to cover that extensively. And if you're not familiar with what the heck am I talking about, about function calling, I'm going to quickly start this video by explaining what is function calling, what OpenAI did. Then we are going to jump right into the new LLM that is called Gorilla Open Functions. And we're going to see a couple of examples on Google Collab Notes. Book. And if you get to the deep end, please let me know in the comment section. So the bigger question is what is function calling? So let's take a scenario. This is this is my crazy art. So you have got a human being just like me or you and uh, the human being talks to an LLM, which is what everybody popularly calls AI. So there is a human and then there is an AI. And typically the response is like this. The human asks a question. The AI comes back with an answer. So the human asks a question and the AI is coming back with an answer here. So when the AI comes back with an answer, the answer could be of multiple different types. One, the answer could be a simple normal text. For example, you're asking a question, what is the capital of India? Then the answer could be normally New Delhi is the capital of India. So this is a very normal text that is a response one. The second thing is maybe the human is asking a question. What is uh, how write me a Python code to import CSV in pandas. Now the AI is going to answer with the computer code like a program that you could co probably copy paste in your Python ripple and then execute. And then the third type that is quite interesting, not a lot of people are paying attention to is something called a code, a code. It could be a code, it could be a JSON, but something that can be used to call a function. The example is, let's say the human has gone ahead and then told the AI, write an email to my wife that I'm going to be late 20 minutes to home. This is the text. So let me say that, write an email to my wife that I'm going to be late 20 minutes. So if this is the message that somebody has told the AI, for example, now you need to know the AI needs to know that first of all, this is an email writing task and I have an access to the API. So I need to just create some kind of a structured response. For example, where the response goes like this, it says send email and two should be my wife's email ID and the body should be, I'm going to be late for 20 minutes. So how do you make a large language model do this? And that is where OpenAI's function calling has been one of their biggest modes. I didn't see any of the open language models have a really good function calling. And I personally know a lot of people who use OpenAI function calling primarily because they didn't have any other good option. For example, OpenAI launched function calling some time back. And this is a really good opportunity for a lot of developers to connect large language models with the APIs that they have got. So that means you can go ahead and then ask any question. What is the weather? So the A AI in this case can generate a function call, like for, for example, something like this, and then it can call a weather API and then get the API response back and give it to you. Or you can say, who are my top customers? The AI can convert this into an API call, which could call your internal API or you can extract structured information. For example, you can say define a function saying extract data, something, something, or it could be like a SQL query. So overall function calling is one of the biggest modes of OpenAI. And a lot of people I personally knew like developers who develop SaaS applications used OpenAI function calling primarily because they didn't have any other good option. And OpenAI has been building on this mode with, you know, formatted JSON and all the other things. But Today, if you're in that position, I've got a very, very happy news for you. And that is Gorilla Open Functions. This is coming from almost a similar team that developed Gorilla, a large language model that can make API calls. But this is now specifically focused on function calling, which they are calling as open functions. Before I show you everything, I want to quickly show you an example of how it works. So we have got the Google Collab Notebook kindly from the Gorilla team. So let's say you have got a, you have got a query that says, I want to order five burgers and six chicken wings from Uber Eat McDonald's. Once this is a user query, you design something, something, something. And at the end of the user query, you are going to get this one. Now this, as you know, if you're worked in computer science or, you know, software development, you know, this is a function call. So you've got a function probably that says Uber eat order, and you're calling that function with these arguments, these parameters, restaurants, items, and all these things. 
and how did this come up to so it takes this natural language and uses this gorilla function call to translate this into a function call and later into the video we're going to see two types of function call but at least at this point you know what is happening here and this is what gorilla functions open functions is letting you do that gorilla open functions is a large language model that is designed to extend any large language models chat completion feature to formulate executable that's the most important thing right anybody can make um, function calls but it has to be executable executable api is called given natural language instructions and api context if we give natural language instructions and api context and that's exactly what is happening here so if you see here for gorilla response you give the natural language as an input and also you give the function documentation or in some cases you give the function in itself so the ai understand what is a function and it takes the natural language converts a query into actually like a function call and that's what gorilla llm is doing so open functions is an llm that they trained using a curated set of api documentation question and answer pairs for from api documentations and this is what the open gorilla op, gorilla open functions is and uh, go, open functions from gorilla by default supports a lot of python libraries and it supports a lot of um, sdks but it is also easily extendable to any other documentation that we have got one of the examples that we'll see shortly and uh, the other important thing is like i say like when we talk about function calling you need to keep one thing in mind there could be like two types of function calling so one is uh, when you have a you have something let's say you have something and it is a function call for a python package or let's say something within the code in itself it's not a http request the second one is http request you go do here and you'd make a get call or a post call so you have a get call or a post call get or a post so what happens in this case is when you want like weather report then this is the function call that has to be used when you want to, for example, go ahead and then say um, something like I want to import CSV in pandas, then this is the function that has to be given. So this gorilla functions, open functions support both these categories, like both these types of function calling. But typically when you talk about function calling, um, most people would mean this type, this particular type, they would not just necessarily mean this one, they would mostly mean this one whenever you talk about function calling in the open world. The good thing with open functions, Gorilla open functions is it is also Apache 2.0 licensed model. That means you can do anything with the model that you want. It's completely open source, unlike, you know, some proprietary license that people have got. And uh, I want to directly jump into the code. But before I do that, I will quickly show you how good this is. So if you see the function calling performance across different models, I've got GPT-4 Turbo, I've got GPT-3.5 functions. You've got GPT-4, GPT-4 function, GPT Gorilla open functions. So for all these things, this is the only open source models that you can see. I mean, like it's it's actually open source. You've got the Gorilla open functions. It has scored 87% accuracy across all these things like GPT-4 Turbo, GPT-3.5 function, GPT-4, GPT-4 function. Now, when you see this thing, it might look like it's a it's a least in the in the bar chart that you have got. But necessarily, this is a huge breakthrough in what people could do without OpenAI. This is like one step further where you don't have to only rely on OpenAI for everything that you do in a SaaS business, especially when it is related to AI. So even though the score is like lesser than the top GPT, uh, GPT-4 function or GPT-3.5 function, doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. This is like a huge breakthrough for, for open source or open model. So I highly appreciate the team for being also open in putting out this benchmarks, like not overselling their solution, but really, really, really being honest and have that integrity to put out this solution. And uh, this doesn't mean this model is bad. This actually means this model is one of the best that is available in the open world. So you can go ahead and then read more about, uh, you know, what went well, what did not go well and all the kind of details. And you can also see the comparison between code function calling APIs and the rest APIs. Like how, how does it differ? Like um, the example that we discussed code function calling APIs and rest APIs. You can learn more about this thing. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. 
I'm very happy to dive deeper into it. All the code is for, available for you here. Like if you want to use it, how to use it, it is all available in the GitHub repository, but they've also kindly shared a Google Collab notebook, which they're using uh, from a model that has been hosted by, uh, you know, UC, UC Berkeley Skylab for free. So use this only for prototyping. Do not use this for commercial purposes. That's something for you to keep in mind. I link the Google Collab notebook and also the GitHub repository in the YouTube description for you to directly click and get started. So all you have to do is go to this Google Collab notebook, click get started. The first step, you can install OpenAI and uh, you can use this. They're going to use OpenAI formatted um, API calls. So that's why you're using it. You're not necessarily using OpenAI API key. Uh, you don't need API key. So you have got the Gorilla server and uh, that's why you can see that uh, the OpenAI API key is empty and the API base is uh, from uh, the UC Berkeley, the hosted server and you have got the code completion. The, the model is used is Gorilla Open Functions V1. Now, what is this Open Functions V1? Now, they've got two types of models. One is a V0, the one, second one is V1. The V0, given a function and a user intent, it returns properly formatted JSON with right arguments, which is what we kind of correctly did. The V1 also does parallel functions and you can choose between different functions. This is also one of the modes of OpenAI. There you can see they've got parallel function calling. So uh, you've got like the example, how the parallel function calling works. So Gorilla for open functions also helps you in supporting parallel functions. I'm not sure, I didn't test it how efficient it is, but the V1 model also helps you with that. Now that is the V1 model, temperature is set to zero and you've got you know the basic uh, OpenAI chat completion format. Now, after you set this function, which is get gorilla response, and uh, you know, you're using the model, the gorilla open functions v1 model. The next thing for you to do is uh, for you to go and uh, specify like a function documentation. How would the model know what function documentation is like? What are the arguments? What is the, what is a function name? And what should it return and all these things? That's where you define in a function documentation. So you've got the name of the function, like a B descriptive, the API call, what should it call, the description of it, and the parameters, like what kind of parameters it takes. So that is basically your function documentation. Once you define the function documentation, then you can have like the conversation and get the function call directly as an output. For example, for a given input here, like get gorilla response with, uh, I want to order the five burgers and six chicken wings from McDonald's with the function documentation, you get this proper Python kind of like a function call output. I want to show you the demo and uh, the query says, call me an Uber ride plus type plus in Berkeley at zip code, blah, 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 in 10 minutes. So it has the function details, the carpool, Uber dot ride, the description and uh, all the parameters that go into it. So the function itself is defined functions. You give it inside functions and you call it. So it, it tells, this is the location, what is the type and the time in 10 minutes. So let me change this and then see. Call me a Uber ride um, type, so let's say pool in uh, Bengaluru. And then the zip code is 5600461 in three minutes, four minutes maybe. And call this, uh, let's see if it works actually. So yeah, Uber ride location pool and uh, it doesn't, tell me the city because we have not added city. So what you can probably do is you can probably go ahead and then add a one more type of the parameter here. So it knows, okay, city is something that I have to call separately. For example, right now it says name, time, description, amount of time somebody is willing to wait. It has got the description what the um, person is ordering. The type is available. So you can go ahead and add one more um, parameter here saying city then it would actually have the city also as part of it. So that's something that you can do it for it to understand it better. But right now it doesn't have city. And that is exactly how you extend the existing function calls using this particular uh, LLM, which is the Gorilla Open Functions V2 and extend it to other documentations. Now you can go further in detail. You can have like the function documentation in itself with a lot more items. If you see this, this is quite simple here, the parameters but you can have like more detail here and then ask the same question and it can answer. The good thing with open functions, like so far, what did we discuss? We discussed that Gorilla open function is a really good, um, uh, uh, like a second layer that you can have for OpenAI function calling. If you were to use OpenAI, if you don't want to use OpenAI, Gorilla open functions 
It's really good enough for you to use. There are two types of models, the V0, the V1, the V0. Uh, given a query and given the user intent, it can return you a proper JSON for you to use. And V1 can help you support parallel function calling. And we learned about function calling. We learned uh, what is function calling, what is code calling, what is REST API calling. The good thing, the other good thing with Gorilla Open Functions is because this has been trained on existing documentations, existing APIs, um, whatever that is available, Gorilla Open Functions already have got knowledge, like extensive knowledge about AWS, Google Cloud, uh, Rapid API. If you have like ever used Rapid API, it's like a marketplace for API, Azure and GitHub. So this can also help you like this can be helpful without you having to fine tune or extend the documentation itself. So that's the example that they've given here. So you can say, I want to list the exports for my bot with the bot ID this and bot version this, and you just specify the function, like you specify all the details here. So this is like, if you've got like your custom, um, let's say bot like Lex running on AWS. So now you can like literally use this and it is going to give you the function call. And now you can call your AWS bot. Uh, just using this um, open functions from Gorilla. And there are a lot more other details in it. And uh, I believe uh, that I would definitely make like another separate video detailing, like extensively detailing how to use open functions for different cases. This is not necessarily a hands-on tutorial about open functions, but I wanted to like let you know that this has been one of the biggest modes of OpenAI. I was so excited to see open functions from Gorilla because Gorilla has already a good name in the market for being like the API LLM. And now, you know, they, they are the first one, or at least like the one that I'm aware of, the good one to have a function calling within open LLM. And this is like a, from a team, Shishir G Patel was already there in the uh, Gorilla team. And then you've got the rest of the team. I'm really glad that this exists with open license, huge, huge kudos and thanks to the team, the UC Berkeley team for putting it out, putting it with clear documentation and everything else that they've done to accelerate the open community. And uh, let me know, like if you do function calling, if you're not familiar with function calling, this is a very big deal. You should definitely start using it because this can transform how you build AI application. It's uh, it's hugely collaborative. You can like connect to the, any ecosystem that you want. And uh, let me know in the comment section, what do you feel about this open functions that could probably, um, I'm not sure like how much it could impact open AI, but definitely for a lot of people who are out there building out AI SaaS, you should definitely try out Gorilla Open Functions. See you in another video. Happy prompting.